Hi, this InDesign tutorial is called Get Consistent Using Character Styles, and this is Computer Tutoring. So let's get started. Uh, what you can do what we, is look at the screen and you can see that we've got the old paragraph styles uh, file and I'll make that available at the bottom uh, for you. Uh, as mentioned before, that this is getting consistent with character styles. Well, what are the difference? Well, with paragraph styles, you want to sort of start your design with that. So in as much as you want to do all your text and, and your spacing, etc., just to get a general look. But sometimes you just want that little extra fancy touch, like maybe just highlighting a a word and then changing it to pink maybe and bold or maybe underlining something and to make that sure that's consistent then you would use character styles and you can also have nested styles as well maybe have the bullet you know one of the bullet points uh, in style this we're not going to cover that in depth there'll be another tutorial for bullet points but this time we're going to concentrate on character styles so if you've downloaded the file i should have put it on there as an idml file so anybody with older versions of indesign should hopefully be able to follow along. So uh, let's have a look here um, and see if I can remember where I can zoom in and zoom out on this computer here. Uh, let's see if just a quick practice and a zoom in. Yeah, there we go. So you can see here that I've got this um, main heading document and I've got like headings and so forth. You can see here what I just want to do is create my first character style. So if you haven't got this already, we're going to go up to window and we're going to go down to styles. And if you go across, you can see there's an option there for character styles. In fact, when I click on it, it makes it appear on the right hand side. And there you can see I've got my character styles. Hopefully, if you've downloaded the same document, you want to follow along. Then you've got the paragraph styles with the normal text section here where you've got other options uh, underneath. If not, then please look at the video. I'll put a little click link teaser, whatever they call it in the top right hand corner. So you can go to that one there. So character styles. So just one thing, just to make sure um, before we carry on with this is just make sure you click in the scratch area. Uh, what I'm going to make sure is also I'm on my um, black arrow up here. I'm just going to click on my scratch area here. Let me just zoom out. Where do I zoom out? Here we go. I think it's that one there. Brilliant. All right. So what I want to do is I want to create a new character style. So I'm just going to click on this new create new character style button just down here. So give that one a click and tell you what, I should be able to just highlight around it. There we go. That's the baby. So that's the one we're going to click. So let's do that. Click on and there's my new character style. So I'm going to double click on that to create my new style. So what I'm just going to do is I'm just going to call this one the pink or pink highlights. Okay, it's not going to be based on any style whatsoever at all, but I'm just going to go over here and I just want to choose a character color just over here. So if I go down here, I can choose this first pink that's available. So it's the standard pink that comes. So if I go then all the way to the bottom and I click on OK, uh, it's just you can get some context here. So I'm just clicking at the bottom here. That's OK. There we go. And I've got the pink highlight. So generally how this works on a, on a very superficial level is you highlight the words that you want to make pink and then you click on that there. There's also a quick style button that you can apply, which is you can bring control and enter to apply those quick styles. Uh, if you just look here, you can see any paragraph styles uh, you can see um, and here. And then I should have any if I type in pink highlights. No, it's not going to come up one there, so it's maybe not the same one. Oh, there it is. Pink highlight should have come up. You can see the little A there represents a, let's just zoom in so you can see. So that little A there that you can see will represent a character style if you're using this quick apply box. We'll have a look at that a little bit later on, see how we can uh, use that one. So let's just zoom back. Oops, is that zoom back? Oh, I'm just in that mode. Let's zoom back again. That's great. Okay. So the way this works is let me just zoom in. So I'm just going to control space and then just draw a box around where I want to zoom in on. So I wanted to, this is all Latin placeholder text that we've got here. I'm just going to double click, highlight this word, word dolicinia. I click on pink highlights and you can see that's highlighted. I think so. Great. If I want to do another word, rehinto for some reason. I can highlight that. I can do control enter to bring up my quick apply. Uh, just press enter again and you can see that's applied there. Uh, so if you want to see how you use that quick apply on the paragraph style video and tutorial, just have a look at that one.
Great, now what's the benefit of this one? So if I just go over to my black arrow and click in the scratch area, make sure nothing's selected. Okay, so the idea is, is say I don't want this pink, you know, it's a bit too much here. And I tell you what I'll do is if I just double click here and then just create a nice sort of lighter pink color. Here we go. Uh, there we go. Oops. <laughs> That'll do. Okay. Uh, oops. And then I'm just going to add that as a CMYK swatch here. So what I can do is if I think, you know what, I don't like that pink highlight here. I can double click on this here. I can go to character color. Because I've added that as a swatch, I can go down and you see here that I've got my uh, new pink that I've added. So I can click on that. And in fact, what I can do is if I go down to the bottom left hand corner, I can click on this little preview checkbox. If I just move it across, you can see that both of these are updating at the same time. <laughs> uh, so if I click on the blue, for instance, here I can see updating in blue, or if I want to go to red, so I can update to red, or you get the idea. And seeing as I've mixed the pink, I'm gonna just click on that and I can see the pink there. Absolutely great. So these paragraph styles are absolutely fantastic to sort of, you know, if you just wanna highlight, make something bold or underline, etc. You know, say for instance, I think, you know what, I just wanna make, add an underline to it. I can go to my pink highlight here, uh, I'm going to have a quick look at uh, different character formats and uh, here as well. There's an underline option. There it is. Let me just zoom in so I can see. There we go. Underline options. So I can go and I've got uh, underline off. So I can just click on underline and you can see it's automatically underlined both of these here. Let's zoom it back, give you some context. There we go. And I can just adjust as well. What type of underlining, you know, do I want to do here? You know, uh, it's, it's quite cool. You know, I can just adjust this and oh, that's a bit too much. There we go. I've got a little offset I can do here as well. So I can bring it down. There we go. So I can muck around with that. Absolutely perfect for those styles. I'm not going to do underline for that, but I think you get the idea, don't you? All righty then. So one of the beauties of character styles comes when you link them into paragraph style styles. Now, if you haven't seen paragraph styles, have a look at that video, that tutorial. I'll put the link on again. If you haven't already seen it, I do strongly recommend you look at that one before this one. Many people sort of on the surface will use um, character style character styles and believe that, on, that they are easier to use. On the surface, yes, of course they are, but when they're in conjunction with paragraph styles, fantastic. So let's click on OK. Now, let's say, for instance, the first, just uh, zoom back, I'm just going to double click on this page here to zoom back. So say, for instance, the first paragraph of every, you know, section, uh, we want to highlight that word in a, a, another color, like a, a dark blue color or pink or whatever. Um, well, let's use this pink one that we've got, okay? So say, for instance, if I go to page two, so I want this first one, this first one, this first one here, the first word to be pink. Let's have a look and see how we can do that. So first thing is first, let's just make sure we've clicked um, anyway, and that's fine. Uh, what I want to do here is, I'm, I, it's gonna be pretty much the same as standard text. If I click on the new style here, uh, there's a new one here at the bottom, it's paragraph style one. So I'm just gonna double cl click on that. And at the top, let's just zoom in. There we go. And then I'm just gonna call this one first paragraph. Uh, that's great. It's gonna be based on standard text. The next style, after I click enter, and when I'm typing, so I was typing, I want that to be standard text. I'm going to choose that as the same. If we go across and down. What I'm interested in is drop caps and nested styles. So you can see this one here, drop caps and nested styles is the one we're going to click. So give that one a click. We're going to click now on new nested style. So click on new nested style, and we will choose the pink highlight through one word. That's great. Now I had a problems with this one here. Actually, we recorded it because I don't know why, but if I'm gonna have a look at character color here, just make sure my character color is black, which is good. I must have changed it later on, but that's good. No problem, I'm just being careful. I now click on okay. That's great. So now I've got the first paragraph here. So what I can do is if I double click and select this paragraph anywhere in this paragraph, I click on first paragraph and notice the top here the top word is pink, which is great. Excellent. So what I can do here is if I'm being consistent, I can just click here and then go to first paragraph here. And if I click here and first paragraph here, I can go throughout my document. Uh, of course, if you followed our paragraph uh, style, styles tutorial, uh, what I can do is if I 
no, always after subheading two, I will be having a first paragraph. I know that's always going to be the case. I can go into subheading two. I'm just going to click away, make sure I've got nothing selected. And then if I'm going to right click on subheading two and go to edit subheading two. So where it says, um, uh, subheading two, it's based on standard text. The next time, instead of it being standard text, I now can click on the drop down list and choose first paragraph here. And then when I click on OK, so say, for instance, um, when you're creating your workflow of style, especially if you're typing a lot of text, let's just find a blankish page here. Here we go. Say I wanted, um, yes, I'll tell you what I'll do is I will just backspace to delete all of that. And then I'm going to zoom in again so you can see how this is sort of working here. So the first stage of this I can type is main heading. Okay. Uh, actually, what I can do as well is even before I start typing, I can click on main heading over here. You see, it's already selected main heading. So I can type main heading and I press enter. And you see it's automatically selected sub heading level one. And then I can put sub head one, press enter, automatically selected sub head level two. So of course, sub head two, press enter. And now it's automatically selected first paragraph. Uh, uh, the result is that the first word is in pink, which is a character style. It's in fact a nested character style. That's great. Well, that's all we've got time for, really. Um, so please, uh, if you've got anything out of this, I'd really appreciate it. Just give it a thumbs up. Uh, hopefully it will help your work workflow and increase your productivity. If you haven't already done so, click on that subscribe button and the little bell notification next to it so you don't miss anything um, with InDesign. So there'll be more InDesign videos coming up as well. Um, and also I've got some Excel ones to go as well, uh, just to answer some uh, questions that uh, certain clients have had. So I just want to say thank you so much for watching.